I'm Nancy Gregg. I'm director of the Cockroach Butterfly Center, which is where we are right now. We're at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. Today we're going to take you to a place that most people don't normally get to see. It's up on the seventh floor of our parking garage, and that is the greenhouses. We're in the greenhouses on the top floor of the parking garage, and we have three greenhouses that are sort of a backup facility for the Butterfly Center. Okay, because we raise butterflies that aren't um, <clears throat> necessarily native to this area, we have to have what's called containment. So this is, a, we call it the vestibule, and we have them in the Butterfly Center too. But, um, so you have to go in here before you go in the greenhouses. So any butterfly that's in the greenhouses would have to fly into here before it went outside. So it would be unlikely that it would escape. That's the idea, it's just to keep the butterflies from getting out. We call this the recovery house. So if you notice, most of these plants in here are these hanging baskets of a vine. Actually, we have several species. And the tags on here, yuck, that's just a, an abbreviation for the species name yuccatinensis. These are all passion flower vines. Passiflora yuccatinensis, Passiflora biflora, whatever. And these are the plants, the host plants for the butterflies we raise. So the caterpillars eat these down. Here's an example of uh, some that have been eaten way back, and these are recovering. These are, we bring them in here, we cut them back, we fertilize them, water them, and then in about six weeks, they've produced a lot of new growth and we, they can be tortured by the caterpillars again, eaten by the caterpillars again. This is a, supposedly a butterfly free space, but uh, occasionally when we bring the plants over from the, the butterfly greenhouse, um, there'll be a caterpillar or a, or a chrysalis that we missed, and so you do occasionally get butterflies loose in here, so we catch them and then take them back into the greenhouse where they're supposed to be. Oh, yes! I caught it. <laughs> you see we go through, we have uh, extra security, we have these freezer strips here that you have to go through, and then I'll just uh, let her out, there she goes. This is one of our um, insectaries, we call them. And this is where, it's a, a confining cage where we collect eggs, where we have a, a breeding population of butterflies. Okay. There's nectar inside each one of these blossoms. The plant produces nectar, and it's, a nectar is a, is a pollinator attractant. So the butterfly has that long, thin tongue that keeps rolled up when it's not in use, and it'll land here and then unroll its tongue and poke it down there into the base of the flower to sip up the nectar. Some of these plants are not for butterflies. We're, what, another thing that we do in the Butterfly Center is really we're trying to simulate a rainforest habitat. So some of these things are for that and not necessarily for the butterflies. They're, I mean, they're background for the butterflies and the butterflies will land on them or sleep on them or whatever, but they're not, they're not food for the butterflies. This is um, blue, blue and purple porterweed. It's a verbena relative and uh, I like to call it verbena on a stick. It's a great nectar source for butterflies. It's very shade tolerant, so we use it in the Butterfly Center a lot. This is a, um, it's a custard apple, and there's a big one in the Butterfly Center. So this is in case that one gets too big and we have to take it out or it dies, and we'll have another. This is a cool plant. Yeah, let's look at this one. This is a really cool plant. This is called Amorphophallus. This is the thing has a like a two foot tall blossom. The leaf will die down and when it blooms it may take a couple more years for the big root underground to get big enough but it produces this huge blossom that stinks like a dead animal and it lasts for a while and um, at Kew Gardens in England they get block, you know, several block long lines waiting to come in to see this thing because it's, it's a huge amazing flower. I think it's called corpse flower. Then things like um, these begonias these are just filler plants that we'll use at bare spaces on the, um, in the they take some shade, so the shady places where flowering plants won't grow, we'll put these in. So it's, it's very cool to have your own greenhouse to play in when you, when you like plants. This is a Nepenthes, and it's a, um, a, an ant plant or a carnivorous plant, a, a carnivorous plant. So it, this is just one developing, but they develop these big bladders on the bottom of the leaf that contain liquid and insects will fall in and then the plant absorbs them to get extra nitrogen, basically. This, this plant is needle flower. It's uh, one of the large plants that we have up in the Butterfly Center, down in the Butterfly Center, but um, we wanted to make a few more of them. So the greenhouse staff goes and takes a clipping of the plant brings it up here and when you certain plants if you put them in damp soil they will root and then we'll as it grows we'll transfer it to a larger and larger pot until it's big enough 
to go back into the Butterfly Center. This is our um, Rainforest Flame Tree, which is our pride and joy. It's a really great nectar plant. We bought it at great expense from a uh, nursery in Florida. So we'll bring this down there because it's such a great nectar source for butterflies and it's a spectacular plant. People always ask about it. First, this is Egyptian Star or Penta, Pentas, and it's another one that we use a lot of in the Butterfly Center again because it's quite shade tolerant and it's a great butterfly plant. You can plant this outdoors just like the porterweed. It's, a, it's very good for, um, for butterflies and hummingbirds. Yeah, actually to maintain the Butterfly Center, we need a pretty diverse team of, of people, people with specialties both in the insect side of things and with the plant side of things. It's not, not, it's not rocket science, you know, anybody can do it really, but it takes an interest and there's lots of things you have to learn how to do. So, um, yeah, and it's fun too. <laughs>